coming folks part nine final part okay so done our chamfers last week done a wee bit of finishing laying the base put the base in okay so what we're going to do today is we're going to line the inside base okay a wee bit of nice emerald green suede um, and then we're going to polish the screws and then we're going to assemble and that'll be it finished so i'm not actually going to land the base that's mm -hmm. right i'm going behind the camera mr spielberg is going to do the lining okay so let's do this we smooth transition let's see if this works <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, this is my wife, Kate. Kate does the bulk of the lining, although I did teach her. <laughs> okay, so Kate, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Ian. I'm here to share my skills uh, today uh, with all of you out there. Uh, let's see, we'll start by looking at the equipment that we need. So here we have some nice card, quite flexible, uh, some double-sided tape, a4 size although you can buy it in rolls and that's fine as well then we have a nice wee bit of suede that I have roughly cut to size already um, now you can buy your suede from a lot a range of of companies we use GH leathers and the great thing about GH leathers is they will give you samples and they sometimes give you a sample booklet and that is just uh, a view of some of the leathers uh, that are available and cow hides as well and this is uh, just a quick look at uh, some more uh, glamorous uh, types uh, as well as the suede's and I think we have you can see emerald green there that's the one we've picked today so like I said GH leathers is where we tend to go for our our leathers and suede's at the moment anyway so what else do we need? Pencil, uh, two blades, a couple of pins, uh, which I tend to stick in my t-shirt, uh, much to Ian's annoyance. Yep. And uh, then a, a ruler, nice big ruler, and some cow glue. Um, I find that is the most useful glue to use when it comes to adding suede. And the reason I like it is because if you do drop some glue onto the suede, you just let it dry and then you can pick it off. So very useful indeed. Uh, much better than a lot of other ones. Okay, so I think we've gone through all the equipment that you need. So what we're going to do next then is have a look at the box and start measuring. So as they say, measure twice, cut once. That's what I try to do. So we just take the ruler in. Have a quick look. And what I tend to do is I tend to use my nail. Uh, to just uh, quickly just double check that I've got the right figure. So I've got 271 there and I'll go 271 and right up to I would say 171 there. Okay, 271, 171. And here's a wee hint or a wee tip. I tend to write it down on the card. That way you don't forget. And it's right in front of you all the time. I like a lot of space. So. Better move back. <laughs> I like to spread myself out a bit and make sure nothing hits anything. So just slide the card across to 271. Okay, and very gently just mark it there. Okay, so that's all you're doing. It's giving it a wee nip. Okay, then you click it right round. Okay, and you slide it back up again to 271. Hold it in place. And gently nip it again. Okay. I've got two nips there, so what I'm going to do is join the nips together. Okay. And I'm going to score down with my blade. Okay, but I, I always check, just double check, that I've got it right up. Because it tends to move a wee bit. So, that's me happy. Uh, another wee tip guys would be if you look at the back of the ruler you know mm -hmm. just add a wee bit of abrasive 
you know, it definitely sort of prevents slippage when you're going to sort of mark out things like that there. So I know what it is left to right, up and down, 171. Yeah. So let's look at, doing the same again, 171. Clean up, flip it round. Join your nips. <laughs> no right. comments, please. Okay. 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 So fingers crossed, this is the right size. Okay. Let's see what happens now. I'll try and put it in. This is our first check. So I tend to bend it and then pin it in. Okay. So already I can feel it's a wee bit tight at the side, at this here side. You can see it's kind of not going right down. You know, it's kind of going yeah. a wee bit. Okay. Kind of a wee bit of flex, so yeah. So, but apart from that, up and down, it's fine. It's just left to it's right. I need a wee tiny nip off, okay? That's when this pin comes in handy. I can nip in and mm -hmm. we can Pull it out quite easy. Okay, yeah. Okay. So those pins are brilliant. So I'll just give it a wee quick nip on here. So like I say, you're just taking a wee tiny bit off. If you do take too much, don't worry. You just take add a wee bit more material. Yeah, because what we want to say is that of course if the card if you do cut the card slightly on their size um when you add the material the material is added oversized so you can actually just cut it so that the material is fractionally you know bigger than the car just to take up that okay there's still a wee bit of bowing there so what i'm going to do is take a wee bit more off but this time i'm going to take a wee bit off here at this corner here okay because it seems to be quite good left to right but now i've realized there's just a wee bit too much up here at the top. This here is it's good to um, you know double check, get your card size right, and then you'll have no problem when it comes to fitting the sphere. You get this part right, and you are smooth running the rest of the way. So I'm just lining it up. I'm just going to take a wee tiny nip. Okay. To me, that was uh, standing out a wee bit more. Okay, that's pretty, pretty damn good. Maybe take one wee tiny bit more off from the left here, just to make sure. Because you know what, sometimes you can be a wee bit just too neat. Well, again, at least you can sort of, you know. Um, make the fabric just fractionally bigger if you need to. So as you see guys, you know, it's just, you're sort of only taking off wee sort of slithers, you know, it's not like sort of millimetres. No, I'm happy with that, if you want to. Okay, that looks fantastic. Now we're ready for the next stage, and that is to add the double sided tape. Okay, and what I tend to do as well is I would mark on the card which bit is going to be to the top of um, the box. Okay, so just a wee X on here, and that bit then is going to the top of the box. Just means then if there's any discrepancies. Show it. Yeah, it's just sort of like um, keeping your alignment to the same side each time rather than flip the card over and put it in the wrong way because it just takes anything to be out fractionally. Of course, the box could be out fractionally square, stuff like that. Okay, so that's the cooker removed. That's the double sided tape side. Okay, so I'm just going to put this face down. Okay, and I tend to put it over.
side and press down. Okay, I'm going to get my still using the scalpel blade. This scalpel blade is for card. Um, this one here is for the suede, and I've marked it with yellow tape. Yeah. So, so sorry. The uh, the idea of the two blades is to keep you know one fresh for the material, so that's really sharp. Um, obviously, cutting a card, you know, it can blunt sort of quite easily. And um, keeping the other one for the actual material keeps it nice and sharp and fresh. Okay. So just like me. Uh -huh. So I'm just using the scalpel blade to kind of put it, this into position. So I'm not just guessing, I'm just kind of pushing it into position. Okay, so I get a nice, hopefully I get a nice alignment there. Okay. And what I tend to do, sometimes I keep this here if I'm working on, say, uh, doing sides as well. I would keep that just uh, at the side of the table because uh, it does seem a wee bit of a waste uh, to do that. But uh, for this here instance, I'm just doing the base. So. Sides. That's how we look. Okay, that's fine. Looks pretty good. Now, what I don't do is I don't put it back in again to test it again. Um, because if you do, you might get a, a you might just um, get a misreading there. So don't worry. You've already uh, checked it out using just the card, and it's been fine. So flip it over. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're putting the good side facing down on the mat. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, then we're going to pull off the double sided tape here. Okay, it's on the card. And I'm going to just clip it over onto this, okay? What I'm doing as well, what you can do is, so you can check and see, make sure that there's no holes in your suede, you know, or blemishes, um, that there's a wee bit of a blemish there. So we'll try and steer, you know, steer clear of that. I can see it on here. So what I'll, I'll try and do is just go over more to the left. Okay, I seem to prefer the left here. Okay, and also the X was here, so I'm just going to re... Mark that on the reverse, yeah. Okay. And I use pencil rather than pen, because uh, pen can smudge and then it can end up going onto your suede, especially if you've got a light coloured suede. Really, you know, maybe not realise, and next thing you've got a nice mark on your suede because you used a pen. So, best to use pencil. Okay. So this is, you know, changed sort of um, to the other knife. So it's nice and sharp, nice clean cuts. Okay, and I'm going, I'm pretty happy with this card. So, uh, the dimensions on it, so I'm going to have it. Pretty neat here. Okay. There's two sides, you can check and have a quick look. Make sure it's pretty close. It's hard to see on this green. Yeah. But if, for instance, if you had cut the card slightly um, shorter there, you would just sort of leave a wee fraction of yeah. Fabric rather than sort of cut it up, you know, flush with the uh, card. I'll say, for instance, that there. Right. I've left a wee bit on there. I don't know if you can see mm, it. Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be hard to pick up, but. Yeah. Just doing that to, for you to see. Get a nice red suede, you would have seen that. Okay, so I'm going to actually take that off because, uh, like I said, I'm quite happy with my card. The 
sometimes what you can find too is you, you're cutting away and you, you actually accidentally cut a bit of the card as well. Yeah. You know, so just take your time. And we're going to try and see if it, see if it fits. Remember to sort of just align your axe mm -hmm. towards the other axe. Okay, at the top here. Let me just slide it in. Carry it in to the little bit up there. I'm quite happy with that. I mean, it's, it is actually quite hard to see, but that is really sort of nice and neat. Mm -hmm. Lovely. If you have a nice bone brush, you can just actually, you know, just double check sometimes. Uh, just having a wee brush in can help you make sure that you know you haven't you know it's not sliding there if it was sliding about I'd be worried yeah you know and it's not um, it's not uh, bubbling yeah there's no sort of uh, bow on it mm -hmm. nice and flat so yeah I'm quite happy with that so what yeah. we're going to do now is press it in the press and then give it about 5 or 10 minutes to be sure it's well pressed and it's going to adhere to the card um, and then I'm going to stick it in with the cutting glue. Okay guys, so <clears throat> if you don't have a press, um, I mean just literally under sort of a bit of MDF, all it's doing is reinforcing the grip between the double sided tape and the uh, suede itself. We have just worked with some suedes over the years and you know, well actually some sort of faux suedes, mm. um, they tend to sort of lift you know, just by rubbing them down with hand pressure. So with putting them under pressure, whether with clamps or any wee sort of press, it just sort of reinforces that. Okay, so we're going to nip up to the press and do that. See you shortly. Okay, so I'm just popping the suede in here, two bits of card, feed the clean, slide it in. It's a bit like cooking. Good, it's nice. Okay, so again there, there was a wee bit of card put top and bottom, just to sort of keep it clean, you know, because obviously there's been sort of wood and everything put into the, the wee press. Again, if you don't have a wee press, you know, quite simply, a bit of MDF, put it under pressure, 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, see you shortly. Okay, well we've pressed uh, the suede now, so what we're going to do is glue it in. So just pull that over to me. And get my glue. Okay. Now I put on uh, an ample amount. Just make sure it's you know not thick and lumpy. You want a nice consistency. You want it to be, um, you know, smooth. Okay. Sometimes you get this glue and it can be dry and lumpy. You just have to throw it away and uh, buy yourself a new pot. Okay. And this here is MDF on the base, so it will soak it up quite well. Now you've got maybe about, I suppose, about 30 seconds or so before this starts to um, get sticky. So I try and get uh, a good square created and, you know, no holes left in between, no gaps. And you don't get, you can't get right into the ends, but you can, you know, just fan. Yeah, you don't need to go, shape. you don't need to go right up the corners <clears throat> or the edges, you know, within sort of like maybe five or six millimeters or something like that because you're just going to end up putting glue onto the sides plus it's obviously going to take far too much time. Okay, so that's me ready. Line up my X's. Oh, quick check. Make sure there's no hard lumps on the card as well because uh, that can be a nuisance. And then I cut it before putting it in and what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I get it right up to the edge to that top end, you know, I line it quite well there. And then just very, very gently, just 
pop it into position. Just nice and lightly. And she almost just slide down into position for you. Okay. Use your finger if you want. Check the edging, but just gently. You're not you're not being harsh with it. You're just being nice and gentle. Okay. And if you see anything that's sticking up, let's get the wee needle. Yeah, the likes of you know the corners or edges can be easily sort of just tucked down. Tuck it down with your needle. If you use um, a blade, chances are you're going to end up scraping the side. Yeah. You know, so get one of these from the needle box. And then just what you're doing is you're giving it a gentle rub to make sure there's no air bubbles collect. Okay, and you're maybe doing that for a minute or two just to make sure. If you find a bubble coming up, just push it out to the sides. Okay. I can't find any at the moment, but I'll just keep on rubbing for a wee minute or two. I can feel a wee one there, and I'm just going to move it away. Okay, and once you're happy then, you got a quick brush. Lovely. And that's you done. Ready for the uh, the next stage. No, that's nice and neat. Perfect. Okay, you ready for the handover? Yes, so in a minute there we're gonna then sort of uh we're gonna sort of polish up some screws. So we'll see and it we'll come back in a wee minute um once we get this set up. <laughs> see you shortly. Okay. Okay guys, I'm gonna polish up some screws. The inner base there, perfectly lined. Very, very nice, very, very neat. I taught her well. <laughs> okay, so for years there I polished up my screws by wet and dry, going through various grits to maybe 1500, 2000. You know, you can get a block of wood put lots of screws in, do it that way. You know, to be quite honest, well, it's a bit sort of messy. And like, if you've only maybe, say you've one box and you've only sort of like, you know, eight screws to do, all that for sort of eight screws just seems to be a lot of work. Okay. So I picked up this wee tip um, a few years back from my late friend, Alan Englefield. An absolute master in architectural boxes but he passed this on to me well he told me about it anyway um, by sort of polishing the screws on the drill press uh, you know using sort of 400 grit sandpaper I sort of thought well you know that's not gonna look sort of too good but it actually looks really nice what you've got you polish the the screw head down it's not like a polished buffed look it's like a machined look something that's come off like a cnc lathe it's got this lovely shimmer around it and it really sits very crisp nice crisp edges it works really well okay so i've got this wee sort of engineer's drill press any drill press will do guys you know we picked this up because i think it was the end of the line a couple of hundred quid thought that would be ideal we actually do because we, we do sort of lots of boxes we do lots of screws well actually i don't <laughs> you know what i mean but it works well let's see how it's done we've got a wee sort of the chuck i have on it is you know a sort of like a, a self-locking chuck rather than but you can use the the keyed ones that i mean that's no problems it's basically about sort of popping your screw up into the, I can just open that up a wee bit, up into the chuck, about that amount, okay? And then locking it up. But guys, it's not about squeezing it so tight that you damage the threads. It's only there, it's only there to hold it, okay? So, we've got some 400 grit. You can use 400 wet and dry. I wouldn't use the sort of silicon carbide because it's actually quite, 
it's not very hard worn. You know, this stuff here, the class is sort of production paper. Um, so it sort of lasts a bit longer. You know, 400 grit. Of course, you can go up further grits. I wouldn't go past a thousand, you know, because you're really, all you're sort of doing is, it's not even sort of removing material. It may sort of work on brass, on stainless steel. It doesn't really work that well. But 400 grit works well. Okay, so now the idea is that you're going to come down with your screw, okay, like this. But you're not going to sort of dwell too long. Because the only thing that'll do is, it'll act like a drill. It'll just go through the paper. So it'll be a matter of going down a few seconds. And like that, okay. Let's give it a wee nip up. Right, okay, so I'll just show you here. Um, I usually sort of bring it up and down, you know, about sort of eight different spots, and that should be the, the screw polished, okay? Okay, so that's one. I'm not too sure if we'll get this on camera, but if we can, it'll, you know, show you the difference. Okay, so that is how the screws come. Okay, I mean, they're pretty rough. Okay, so after polishing, guys, look at that. It's got a lovely shimmer around it. It's like a star. It's like a star. It really is. It's very, very nice. It's as quick as that. Now, of course, if you were sort of doing lots of boxes, it does take time, you know, to do it this way too. So, in a sense, the other method of the polishing and the grits may be more sort of like efficient for you. But in saying that, I actually like that look. So all our screws get done that way. I mean, don't just take it out of the packet and put it in. It really does show a sign of, well, these are the final touches. That's the, the, the details that people are going to go, oh my goodness, this is not so beautiful. You know, any other sort of like woodworker sort of sees that, they'll just know that you just haven't even sort of taken the time to put the, the detail. You might have spent all your time sort of cutting dovetails and, and laying this and then laying that. But then when it comes to the final pieces and you put just something that's out of a box, you know, to me, that spoils it. That, and it's about taking your time, you know, it's not about sort of like, let's produce a hundred in a minute. You know, it's about sort of getting them right. Okay, so let's do a couple more. Obviously, if you're sort of doing brass, it's a lot softer, you know. So you just have to sort of, don't dwell on the bottom too much. Okay, so I'm going to polish the rest of these and then we're going to do assembly. See you in a wee minute. Okay guys, last hurdle. Okay, so we've got our screws polished up, got our hinges, the needle lead of course. Um, I prefer it, the needle lead, there's a slightly larger side of the pin. Um, to the other. I prefer the smaller side to go out, but to be quite honest, these are sort of any way fitting, you know, up, down, whatever, okay? Right, so, first thing is, get the hinge in, okay? The one you want, the way you want it. And now, a lot of you probably over the years have been sort of screws in, screwdriver. I actually sort of don't use, you know, a manual screwdriver sort of anymore because you're sort of turning like that and then you're turning again like that. So it's like a stop, start, stop, start. If you're working on sort of like with brass screws, you're adjusting your pressure each time, you know, and you can end up sort of like nicking the wee slot slightly up. Mightn't sound like much, 
it's about the detail, okay? I use this wee thing here, you know, um, sort of like quite sort of slow speed. Um, it's quite small to handle. It's not like one of the big chunky ones. It's just a sort of simple Ryobi. The thing is that I think they've actually discontinued this model and they brought it a newer model that's slightly bulkier. That's a, a wee bit awkward when you're actually putting in sort of like when you're attaching the lid sort of to the base. You know, this one sort of works well. Um, and like, say if you're doing lots of boxes, I mean, who wants to be doing that? You're going to end up with like one big massive arm, okay? May as well have two, eh? Okay, so we've got our screws. And the way I sort of start my screws is, I always sort of start it, you know, about 10 o'clock, okay? Whatever way you want to look at that. You know, because I want to sort of, I want to align the slots. To me, that's very important. I know some chaps use the sort of like the star head Phillips head sort of like screws. I don't like them. You know, I just think that's just sort of like too much of a sort of, it, to me, it's just not the right finish. If you want to use them, no problems. Okay, so I just sort of started. That's the first one in, okay? Hinge is a bit sort of dirty because of my fingerprints. <clears throat> but you can see what I say about, you know, it's constantly turning. There's actually a, a torque set on it, so you could sort of set it so that it actually just clicks out when it's got this certain torque. And then you could just align your, your slot in, okay? First one in. Align. Oh. Put your screw about ten o'clock. Guys, some, some people aren't done the sort of aligning or timing the screws. To me, this is sort of definitely, you know, this set of things is nearly sort of like engineering. You know, do you ever see sort of like some of the best handmade sort of rifles and guns in the world? I mean, all the screws are sort of timed and aligned. You know, that's very important to me. Um, if it's not the you, and that's okay, but if you want to sort of bring your boxes, you know, sort of up a level, polish them and align them and use a slotted screw. Definitely, okay? Okay, so not worry about sort of cleaning off the fingerprints right yet because we're still going to be handling it. <clears throat> the next thing I do is, before I put any screws in here, I put my box on, or I put my lid on, sorry, and then um, I just check. <clears throat> the idea is that I'm just checking my front to back alignment. Okay, I can feel at this side, it's fractionally out. That's good, but this side's sort of out slightly. Yeah. Now, what it sort of means is I have to bring my lid forward very slightly. It actually means I've got to sort of pop them screws out again. But it's best to get it right. Okay. Now, we're talking sort of fractional maybe 8.1 you know it's very level but quite simply sort of a couple of bits of clear tape or if you've got sort of sycamore in here you can use the sort of like 
you know, that masking tape, which is quite a similar color. Go, okay, so we'll pop these out. Right, guys, so we just want to add a wee bit of masking tape to the top of that. That's going to push the lid in that direction. Depend on which way yours is off. I mean, most people will be sort of quite happy with that alignment, but I think it's sort of at this stage, you know, it makes sense to sort of fine tune it. Okay. I did mention that, you know, I would be coming out with wee, they're very sort of tiny shims. They're the same sort of radius as the hinge, and they'll be coming out in brass and stainless steel. Sort of like buy them in a pack of 10 or whatever. We haven't, that's common, like, but the idea is then you just simply pop in a wee shim which I'm sort of thinking they're going to be like sort of, you know, 0 0.05 sort of thick or 0 0.1. I'll have to look at that. But they'll of course blend in better rather than sort of like clear tape or masking tape. But in the meantime, we'll have to use this. Okay, so we've got a wee bit of masking tape. You know, it's quite sort of similar color to the Sycamore. If you were sort of yours was like a darker wood, then just go for a sort of clear tip, okay? So it's literally what we want to do is we want to wrap it round, but we want to stay slightly shy of the edge that's going to be seen in the box, okay? So we want to wrap it round there very, 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 very slightly. Take our blade, trim it down. Trim it down and now uh, so what you'll see is it's wrapped around but it also I sort of have a wee bit tucked in underneath very 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 slightly okay I reckon I reckon two bits at the most this tape's about 0 0.07 sort of thickness so I just don't think one is going to cut it again just tuck it in underneath okay so it's a wee bit in underneath, it's round there, the radius, and it's shy from the top. Because what you don't want is, you don't want it to be sort of coming out over the sort of hinge. Okay. So, you'd be hard pushed to sort of pick that out once the sort of like box is in place. Okay, just slide it on again. Just want to do a wee. That's nice. Okay, that is nice. And it's like sort of, you're talking about moving that sort of 0 0.14 of a millimeter. Okay, it's quite, it's quite small amounts. And that, you know, that's really nice. And that's what you want. I mean, you don't want them. I mean, you don't want that. Y you know, that's just going to sort of like, well, apart from being very sort of, you know, upsetting to yourself that it's been so far out. Well, if you sort of follow the setup that I showed, I mean, there's definitely something wrong if you're that sort of far out. But you want to get very, very close. Because that's, I mean, see when people come in, one of the first things to do, I mean, because people touch boxes, tables, chairs, they would sort of go, wow, stand back a bit. People come in, they interact with the box, and the first thing they do is they just always check the sides. I mean, they'll probably not turn around and say, I mean, that side. <laughs> but it's definitely one thing that they sort of do first. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to slide that off, 
okay now I'm going to actually pre-thread the front two holes pre-threading that because when you put the sort of lid on you don't want to be sort of juggling and I know I've sort of seen ways where you you sort of put a, a block up here and sort of steady it and all this here well of course you've got to build that up and if you've got sort of quite a few boxes to do or whatever that might make sense but I don't think it's necessary so I'll just take a sort of a wee bit of a sort of duff screw which is hasn't been polished and literally put it in 10 o'clock alignment don't put it in the full way put it in sort of like half three quarters at the most back it out okay so 10 o'clock alignment and of course you can sort of do the back ones as well but of course once your lid is up and the front two screws are in then you know you don't sort of need sort of like 25 hands but you know, I'll do them anyway And of course, if you're sort of getting into sort of quite tough materials and you're maybe using brass hinges, you want to sort of maybe look at, you know, a sort of steel screw, you know, the same size, just to pre-thread there. Because you can easily, especially brass, you know, you can easily break off a head and then it's like, oh my goodness, I've got to drill that out. Pass all. Duff screw, we're going to set it there. Okay. Now, I'm on around here, Mrs. Speedbird. Right. Our hinges are, are a nice snug fit. If yours are a wee bit loose, basically, once you sort of have it on, see if you have your thumb down on that hinge there. Okay. That will literally keep your lid in place so that you're not having to sort of like balance it out. Okay, so. Okay, and then over this side. So we're going to pre-thread as well, which is sort of handy. Back screws, which you've also sort of pre-threaded. Right. Okay, let me just get my micro fiber and just go over your hinges. Take off all your thumbprints. Take off your sticker. Hey guys, there is your finished box. got a gap here 0 0.1 0 0.2 at the most touching nice at the front we've got our our brake line nice wee bit of sycamore shown ties in with our up and down neat from the back nice and round up and down haha uh -huh. Okay, that's very satisfying. There you go, guys. Now, 
I know some of you were waiting for sort of the whole series to sort of run before starting yours. Totally makes sense. You can make it as you go along. Totally makes sense to me. Either way, it's entirely up to you. Guys, we've really sort of enjoyed this and um, future videos are going to be, you know, we're going to go through all sorts. We're going to go through lock fitting, precision, um, catches. We have new ideas for new hardware. We have jigs coming out to help you fit the locks and the hinges. Because again, I said last week or the week before, we're going to, I want to bring people away from the router table, you know, because I just think working blind with your piece down isn't very sort of suitable. And I think there's sort of like an easier way to do that without the sort of stress or the breakout or all that sort of problem like. But there you go. Isn't that great? Okay, so we're going to do a wee sort of closure, um, me and Kate. We're going to get ready. I'm going to set out the bag and say thanks to everybody. See you shortly. Hi right, folks. That's the end of the first series of videos. And hopefully your box goes well. I think it will. Because it's not really that hard if you take your time. But it's been very enjoyable to make them. You know, we decided to make them just because of COVID. But I think now what we're going to do is we're going to pursue and keep making them how to sort of make and fit, or sorry, how to fit locks, other sort of items of hardware, different types of boxes, different, yes. yeah, designs, trays, lining, ring runs, all that sort of stuff. So for me and Kate, and daughter Spielberg behind the camera. I want to say thanks very much. Remember, take your time. All the best, guys.